Good morning, everybody. I'm David Grona, the head of North American Media for uh, Clear Path Analysis. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, we're here to talk about uh, ESG integration and how it's becoming more and more important for investors uh, every day. Um, and we're here to talk to uh, investors and also some specialists to talk about how they're implementing it and what are some of the creative and, and, and technical, technologically innovative ways in which ESG uh, is coming to the forefront. I'll let my two panelists introduce my, introduce themselves, starting with you, Toro. Yes, thank you, David. So I work at the International Finance Corporation, which is the private sector investment arm of the, the World Bank Group. Uh, I work in the Gender and Sustainability Solutions Department, um, and I've joined IFC about three years ago. So in my role, I'm responsible for global, global corporate governance investment risk management, as well as the delivery of ESG advisory solutions, technology, and tools. Um, I have the pleasure also of leading uh, ESG capacity building initiatives globally uh, in emerging markets on a wide uh, range of issues. Before joining IFC in 2019, I worked at the Public Sector Pension Investment Board in Canada, so PSP. Uh, it's a Canadian pension fund based in Montreal, and I held the role of Senior Director of Responsible Investment where I was leading the integration of ESG factors in PSP's global public equities and bonds portfolio. And before joining PSP in 2016, I worked at Toronto Stock Exchange for about 15 years. So working with uh, listing companies on the exchange and uh, company regulations and, and the like. So today uh, I'm joining you uh, very happily to talk about some of the innovative tools that we are developing at IFC uh, in terms of ESG. I'd like to just kind of we're gonna we're gonna shift into the future here. This will be like Star Trek. We jumped several several centuries based on what uh, Martine's going to share with us. Now you worked in the ESG sector, uh, Martine. Uh, you were in a, a traditional pension role. You've got something very dynamic to talk to talk about here. What is Malena? And I'm going to spell it M A L E N A. And why is this revolutionizing the the, the decision making process? Uh, and how is it revolutionizing the, the decision-making process for pension funds uh, in the world? Uh, yes, so MALENA stands for Machine Learning ESG Analyst, and it's an artificial intelligence-powered natural language processing solution that we have developed internally at IFC. Um, what we did find is that there were several commercial natural language processing solutions for ESG analysis, but the majority of them were focused on developed markets. So we created IF, we created Malena to address this gap and to have a solution that is specifically tailored to emerging markets. And what it makes it unique is that it is trained on IFC historical uh, ESG and impacts data set. Um, so we can, you know, and the, the tool has been trained to analyze unstructured data for ESG related information with a focus on emerging markets. So our data set goes back to 15 to 20 years. It is focused on emerging markets. We believe that, you know, IFC, we don't think that there's any other organization that has such a rich data set in terms of ESG and impacts information uh, that date back, uh, you know, as far for emerging markets. So for us, it was very important first to develop this tool internally so that our so for every project that we undertake every investment that we undertake we do an esg analysis it is based on ifc's ens performance standards and corporate governance methodology and we're also working on an external version uh as well so um and you know the, the external version is really focused on how can we address the shortfall in investments that are needed to achieve the sustainable development goals? I think for emerging market, the shortfall of investment has been uh, estimated at $2.5 trillion. And you know what we hear from people is that there's missing ESG data and information, and it's critical to address um, you know, those gaps in order to remove barriers for investors to come in into emerging markets and be able to uh, meet this SDGs. Um, so what we did find is that that data exists uh, for the most part. Uh, it is there publicly. Uh, it is often in the form of news articles, uh, prospectuses, sustainability reports. However, you know, there's a lot of unstructured text 
Um, and it's hard to compare, uh, and it, uh, that requires also a lot of technical, uh, you know, ability to be able to have a comprehensive approach. So we really believe that artificial intelligence solutions such as natural language processing can play a transformative role in unlocking investment uh, in the medium and long term uh, in order for investors to access that ESG information. As it relates to the external version of it, is that for use, potentially white label use by other pension funds externally or, or other investment organizations? Is that the intent of it? I mean, we're still, you know, we're still in the beta version of it. So we've uh, engaged with a few asset managers who have tried uh, and tested and provided feedback to the solution. We developed as well, um, you know, this solution with external partners uh, that are clients, investment clients of IFC as well. So eventually we would like to uh, either have a solution like software as a, as a, you know, available as software as a service a solution where people could, you know, take their ESG documents and feed them into Malena and be able to gather uh, ESG insights based on Malena's review. So the way Malena works is that it's able to understand ESG terms and, and provide a sentiment uh, based in the context in which those terms occur. So the sentiment is either positive, negative, or neutral. And we use the, you know, our uh, ENS performance standards and corporate governance methodology as the taxonomy and the structure into which uh, this information is analyzed. Now, out of curiosity, because it is filtering through um, information, and especially news information is yes. being one of the elements, does it require some a set of human eyes to go through it to be able to vet whether or not it's actually, A, it's real information, and B, if in fact it's information that is negative or positive. I mean, you could look at a headline and con and, and it could be completely out of context with whatever uh, the, the actual information is is uh, in, in the body of the uh, an, an article or a report. Or a report. Yeah, that's a very good question, David. So there's a couple of ways that we can address that. Uh, currently, Malena um, is operating at 90% accuracy. To give you a benchmark, um, we typically, uh, you know, the benchmark is around 83, 85% accuracy for those types of models. So that's very good performance. Mm -hmm. And the way that we are operating is that, you know, when our specialists are looking at the information that Malena is providing, they can reinforce her learning. So they can agree with the sentiment. And if they don't agree with the sentiment, then it, it goes back to the team and they look at it and they try to retrain the algorithm. So it's continu like it's a continuous improvement. And I think one of the things that IFC can bring is that we have you know close to 200 in-house ESG specialists. So you know, so that feedback look is is very important. And we're able to, um, you know, to um, build on that and leverage uh, that knowledge that we have internally to uh, train Melena. Thank you. Well, is the intent of Melena, uh, Martin, is the intent of Melena to be able to make the actual d investment decisions or is it more so on policy setting uh, at this stage? No, no, it's it's really a tool to, to assist our ESG specialists in their due diligence activities. So you know, to be able to identify, uh, you know, trends, like if you say, okay, in infra Africa, these are some of the issues that we're seeing, these are some of the trends, so we can focus our due diligence effort. It's also a great tool to assist in our portfolio monitoring activities, especially as uh, now we've integrated live, you know, news feed uh, into Malena. So, you know, raising alert, there's an issue, you know, going on in Latin America, you know, in Brazil, in respect to biodiversity. This is also impacting our projects. So it's really to allow us to to have those early signals uh, for our specialists to be able to follow up, uh, you know, on those signals with our clients uh, and to be more proactive and also to understand. I think, you know, uh, it's also to understand from our from experience and lessons. So we have so many projects, so many you know, investments, uh, Malena gives you a way to access all this intelligent in, intelligence mm -hmm. in a very concise um, and accessible manner uh, for us to be able to learn from our, you know, you know what we, what's happening on the ground. So I really see this as a tool that is complementary to some of the work that our specialists are doing 
and it's not meant to automate any type of decision making, but to provide you with unique insights uh, based on you know our taxonomy and methodologies. I, I also noticed that there's a big push right now um, with a lot of pension funds, insurers, etc., a lot of institutional investors on the issue of carbon uh, emissions, and that really has been the biggest one at the moment. Uh, is Malena's strengths more in the E side, the environmental side? Is it more? Is, does it have a lot of strengths uh, in the, um, the, the the social side, as well as governance? I mean, where where does the where do the strengths lie with the uh, with the platform at the moment? Uh, is it based on where everyone's looking at, or is there also sort of a um, sort of a, 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 a ramp? to be able to address the other two uh, main issue, big issues with uh, with ESG? Uh, th yeah, that's a very good question. So we took a phased approach uh, when we developed Melena. So we started uh, training Melena using our environmental and social performance standards. So those performance standards relate to, you know, how you manage uh, ENS. So ENS risk management talks about biodiversity, labor issue, labor safety, uh, you know, displaced population. So that's that was the basis. And now it's also trained to understand, you know, the G, so the, the corporate governance aspect of it. We are, we have integrated in the platform uh, in collaboration with our co co um, co colleagues in climate, um, climate terms. So I think we have more than 200 climate terms uh, identified specifically and trying to build you know, the, um, the, ent not the interface, but what would be helpful uh, for our investment officers to, to get, like in terms of like climate dashboards and climate information. And we're also doing the same uh, on gender. So we have a very strong, um, you know, development objectives, very ambitious development objectives related to gender and economic inclusion. So also supporting that business case. So Currently, Malena can understand about 1,200 ESG terms um, and, and be able to, so, you know, the way it works, it will be able to look at a news item, highlight the risk term, and, and decide whether it's occurring in a positive, in a neutral, or negative uh, context. And, and then all of this information is rolled up, so you can, you're able to have the complete picture based on the information that is available in Malena as to you know, where where are you seeing red flags? Like, where are you sitting, seeing negative um, sentiments in terms of biodiversity? And how, you know, how can you deal with that? What do you do with this signal? How do you engage your client? How are you proactive in terms of preventing some issues? And how do you learn from similar projects with similar profiles? Um, so, so yes, so it was meant to support our ENS due diligence activities, all the activities that we have in terms of integrated climate, integrating climate considerations in our investment, as well as gender. Now, one of the common themes that we, we keep hearing uh, from a lot of the investors uh, is that there really is no broad standard, uh, broad set of ESG standards uh, in, in the industry. And has that, does that pose a lot of challenges with whether it's top level policy, policy making or internal policy making uh, for, for standards within the portfolio or even with, with setting uh, the, the, the platform for Malena? I mean, what, what kind of challenge does this pose not having a universal standard of benchmark? Uh, I, can, I can start with that. Um, I think it's challenging. I think what is challenging, it's challenging for companies to, to report, right? And then it means that it's challenging for investors to access that information. Um, I think we are very you know, happy to see that um, IFRS is moving and uh, by proposing sustainability reporting standards, I think that will kind of you know, deal with the alphabet soup of the different um, standards that we have uh, you know, between SASB, GRI and the likes. Um, I think, you know, with artificial intelligence, what you can do is is map, you know, it's easier to map, like a lot of the reporting standards have, you know, you know, they overlap and they, you can map the different requirements and, and then hence, then you can, you know, using artificial intelligence, understand under how, under different reporting uh, frameworks, uh, different companies are doing in terms of what they are reporting. But I think, uh, you know, going forward, what we look forward about is 
and having universal sustainability reporting standards. I think that will be very helpful for companies to report. And then in turn, as investors, we have reliable information, um, you know, and that on which we can act and decide how we integrate this, um, you know, how we integrate this in our investment decision. I think that is something, especially when I was at the PSP, um, that would be very much, you know, uh, appreciated to have. Um, and also, I think, you know, looking at emerging markets, uh, a lot of emerging markets issuers are struggling in terms of uh, reporting, getting coverage for some of the ESG, uh, you know, rating uh, agencies uh, in developed markets. You know, it's a lot more uh, robust, but for emerging markets in particular, it is quite challenging to integrate ESG information in your investment decisions. And hopefully this is one of the gap um, that Milena also wants to address uh, externally facing, uh, for externally facing uh, investors. Yeah, if I may add to that, um, I also think, you know, where people are trying to move from ESG investing to also impact investing and making sure as well, like, are you creating other issues? Like, yes, I'm investing in this green, um, uh, I would say clean energy project that uh, doesn't um, generate GSGs. However, uh, it is killing, you know, all the bird population, you know, in, in a country, right? So it's also... So it's also trying to balance, you know, doing some of those things that are good, but also, uh, you know, in the EU, there's this approach around do no significant harm as well. That is very important. So how do you balance all of those different, um, you know, components? I think it's going to be very challenging. Um, I also think that in terms of, you know, I want to come back to pre uh, prediction. Um, you know, that is something uh, that we want to be able to develop also within Malena. So based on, you know, our experience and all the analysis, all the data you have analyzed, can you predict what some of the outcomes could be, um, you know, based on, you know, the ESG signals um, that you're seeing uh, based on this company or project? So I think that's going to be a very interesting area to watch out for, to see uh, how artificial intelligence can support that. But I, I really think that, you know, the biggest challenge is to, you know, it's really moving towards impact. So what are the positive and the benefits that are we are we supporting through those investments? And that's the only way you're going to be able to meet the SDGs. You have to show uh, how you're improving quality of life, access, you know, access to clean water, for example, uh, while, you know, not you know, while you're providing access to clean water, you're not removing, uh, you know, water source uh, for some biodiversity issue, right? Like, it's, it's not easy. There's all those um, domino effects that we need to to consider. Yeah. Um, I'm getting some questions coming from uh, from the audience. Very good ones, by the way. And I, I'll throw them out at you completely. Yeah, optional if you want to um, uh, discuss them. But I know we've had this this conversation uh, in, uh, in, in our, our prep conversations. How do you address greenwashing risk in your investment process? And that's a that's one that comes up a lot. So I, I don't know if I, either one of you or both of you want to tackle that one. Yes, I, I think to complement what Tour is saying is that you know there are some principles and frameworks out there that you can apply. Um, I think, for example, uh, what the work that is being done around, you know, green bond issuances, like providing, you know, around the use of proceed, uh, having some assurance and verification there. I think that's one piece of the puzzle. However, coming back to my issue of earlier, yes, if you have a, a, a green, um, you know, a green project where you are producing clean energy, but at the same time, because of your project, you're displacing, you know, vulnerable populations, uh, you know, is it a good project or is it a bad project? So it, it's very complex. I think, you know, it requires many, many level of analysis. Um, and I think for us, I mean, you know, we do like more investment, like project by project basis or company by company basis. We're able to dig down a bit more deeper under, you know, on those issues and try to, you know, to, to guide companies to uh, mitigate the negative, the negative impacts that they may have through a project. But, you know, when you do capital markets transactions, when you're buying shares on the secondary market, 
it, it's very hard and, you know it's very hard to to be able to control for that and i think this is where you know when you're an institutional investor your stewardship practice um, are really going to be coming handy so you know how do you to have the proper information to engage with boards and senior management of the companies in your portfolio to change some of those behaviors or to take a more proactive approach in mitigating some of the risks and the negative impacts you know that they have in terms of their business activity so i think we all have a role to play uh, you know as the as the different players of the ecosystem whether it's investors companies NGOs, for example, also pushing some companies, you know, to look into their uh, supply chains uh, for any type of human rights issues, for example. So I think it's very important, um, you know, to engage with boards, engage with companies and push them to uh, for best practices. And I think that's a good way to potentially avoid uh, greenwashing. What would you say is the uh, ratio between impact and risk driven data? Uh, in your uh, in, in your investment process, and how do you articulate those two frameworks together? Which again falls right in line with what with what, with, uh, what Martin was saying. So at IFC, right? I mean, we're not like a typical investor in the sense that yes, we invest for financial return, but we also invest for impact. So you know, all the projects that we have must have an uh, you know economic, social. Uh, benefits to uh, to them. And we have a framework that is called AIM. Um, you can check it out on IFC's website or some information as to, you know, for every investment that we make, there's an investment thesis in terms of financial performance, but also, you know, uh, social uh, development, economic development. How many new jobs does this integrate, you know, uh, lead to gender, uh, you know, more women being, um, you know, being uh, included uh, in some business areas? Uh, is the project reducing uh, GSGs? Um, you know, all of those questions. And so when, as part of our process, we do track impact. And at entry, we look at also, you know, ESG risks. So uh, these are two parallel, but sometimes overlapping processes, but it, it, they don't come from the same point of view. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really to, you know, ensure like the ESG risk management that we do is really to ensure like there's no undue risks. And also if there are a heightened risk that we have a plan for the client to be able to address and mitigate those risks. And then on the other hand, we have the investment thesis that also include, you know, the impacts and we have, you know, developed indicators that need to be collected on an annual basis at the client level to track uh, whether, you know, the thesis in terms of impact is actually uh, being met and fulfilled. And, and Martino, are you in agreement? I mean, is this this is a, is this a marathon? And we got we got less than a minute left, so I'll give you the last word. Is this a marathon or a race? And how long to how long how much long how long do we need to give ourselves in order to make this happen? It's definitely a marathon, but I would like to have it as a marathon with some significant milestones, right? Like, it doesn't mean like um, you know we have to wait until the end of the marathon to kind of take stock and making sure we've made some progress. But I think. Along the way, that there will be some small victories and small improvements as we go along that journey. But I agree with Tour, it requires a lot of coordination, and it's not one actor, one fund who can change, um, you know, all of this uh, on its own.